Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, so let's rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to your Father's house. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Almighty God, what a joy and what a privilege it is to come to your house on your day. We thank you for this place. We thank you for these people. We thank you most of all for giving us the gift of faith and drawing us into your presence. And we beg that you would accept our praise, that you would speak to us as only you can, and we would find ourselves changed for the better when we leave your house today. We thank you also for the gift of technology for those who worship with us online and pray that those who are able will be back in these pews next Sunday. In Christ's name, amen. Do me a favor and please sign the little yellow attendance card. Use that card to put down any prayer requests that you have and to sign up for the Wednesday night meal. Uh, this week it's lasagna, salad, dessert, and ice cream. Uh, was asked uh, not long ago to remind people there's always ice cream on the table, so you, you can't beat that, right? And then uh, if you'll look with me at the little half sheet, I have one correction. Uh, Tuesday, the couple's Bible study is at 630 and then elders, remember our meeting time has changed to 6 o'clock on Thursday. And then what happens on Saturday at 1 o'clock? Easter egg hunt. And Lisa needs you to continue to bring lots of eggs already stuffed with candy, correct? Look on the back of the bulletin. Our sympathy uh, goes to Becky and Steve Doe in the death of her mother, Joey Owen. The Lord's Supper will be observed next Sunday as it's the first Sunday of the month. Really good news about Peter uh, Bowers and her mission trip to Ecuador. With our help, she was able to raise everything she needed. And then our senior adults, Tops, are going to have a finger food and game day on Tuesday, April the 11th. That'll be at the home of Don and Linda Rush. One quick thing about, uh, I was away for two weeks with the Navy, uh, taking a course that uh, commander chaplains need to take. It was a really good course. I met some really outstanding chaplains. And then last Sunday, I took a couple of chaplains who call themselves Reformed Baptists, which means they're just like us, except they quite children. I think they'll get there. But they went to church with me. Uh, we went to First Presbyterian Church up in... Uh, uh, Newport, beautiful, beautiful old church built in 1892. If you want to see some beautiful stained glass windows, Google their website. It was a wonderful service. Let's continue our worship of our living God. Good morning. So we can worship our Lord through song.
Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 17. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Let's continue singing together. Come, now is the time to worship. Let's come before God right now, closing our eyes and bowing our heads. Oh, Father, a couple of phrases in those opening songs caught my attention, and I hope the attention of all of us. The first one was simply come. You're calling us to worship you, to confess our sins, to express our gratitude to you for the gift of faith to learn from you because there are some things we need to unlearn that we've learned in the world and then to be challenged because we have come to church to live differently today and this week. And then in that first song that you wrestle with the sinner's heart. We confess that we've been wrestling with you and we find that you're a worthy opponent And sometimes we have been doing the things that we've done that were wrong simply because it's our habit. We just get into a bad habit. And other times we try to test the water, and though we know it may be wrong, we think, well, it couldn't be that bad. Please continue to wrestle with our hearts, turning our eyes back to you. And make us to see as you wrestle us and pin us down and hold us down that we're hurting you and we're hurting others, not just ourselves. We thank you, God, for giving us a conscience. We thank you for giving us grace. And we pray that that unmerited favor would be the way that we deal with people who've wronged us. Help us to just simply forgive and find that the bonds and the relationships are healing. And if God, if we can't forgive, if it's a 
It's a big hurt. It was a big, big thing that someone did to us or to someone we love. Would you at least help us to get started? We thank you, God, for the gift of the freedom of speech and freedom of religion to practice our faith that we enjoy in this nation. We pray against those who would take it away and pray that you would help them to come to faith. We pray, God, for all the leaders of our nation, and particularly as we've been asked to do, we pray this week for the leaders of the city of Memphis and the leaders of this county. As I told folks at the early service, it hurts my heart when I introduce myself and someone says, where are you from? And I say Memphis, and they say, oh, wow, that's a dangerous place. And it doesn't seem that way to me, Father, because I don't make drugs or sell drugs or buy drugs. But we do know that this is a dangerous place in many neighborhoods for many people who are innocent bystanders. And so we pray against those who sell and make drugs and ask that you would draw them to you. And we pray for those who are addicted to drugs and pray for programs like AA and all those ways that you work to bring people out of the grip of addiction. We pray for our city and ask for revival in the family and in the church. And we ask you to hear us now as together we pray the prayer taught to us by Jesus, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let's stand. Part of that reviving is saying publicly with conviction what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the one holy and universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Hey, y'all, I don't know where the piggy bank is, so put it in the missionary offering. Oh, it's right there. Okay, my bad. So, Miss Tina, have you got some volunteers? Tell you what, uh, let's have Grace and Moon Koosh, will you do the buckets for us for the missionary offering? Come on in. Hey, hey. Hey, Joey. Come on, sweet girls. Yes, you can. Let's let everybody sit down. Stand right here with me, okay? Hey, Miss Lisa, look at this. There's not room on this these two pews for all these kids. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Yes. All right, so remember that we're having our Easter egg hunt this, this Saturday, and I'd like for you to invite friends, maybe cousins, people you go to school with. There'll be lots of Easter eggs. And how many golden eggs, Miss Lisa? Three. Three golden eggs. So there'll be something special inside of them. And we'll have, I'm not sure what it'll be. Miss Lisa will tell us about that later. Then it'll be a good time, lots of good snacks. Hope you'll come. And what if it's raining? What do we do, Miss Lisa? Next week. And if it's raining that week, we do it inside. We'll do it inside. Okay. All right, pretty girls, you want to knock on the puppet stage for me? You want to knock? All right. Who's there? Hey, that, this is Pastor Tim. Hey, that sounds like Manny. Hey, Manny, come on up and talk to us. Yeah. Okay, y'all can sit down. I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, Manny? Um, good morning, I think. Hey, hey, what's with the blanket? Good morning, Will. Did you just get out of bed? Yes and no. Well, what do you mean? I've been hiding in my bed all night long under this blanket, and I haven't slept one week. Oh, Manny, let me help you with this blanket. You're shaking. Yep. You're scared? No, I do it so right. I hope it doesn't see me. Hey. Listen, why are you so scared? Oh, Pastor Tim, I did something really dumb last night. What'd you do? I watched a scary movie mm. that was all about ghosts. And I've been hiding under my blanket ever since. I understand now, Manny. You know what all that stuff in the movies is? It's just make-believe. It's not real. Those ghosts aren't real. It's just special effects. Well, whatever it is, it's your I know, but listen up, Manny. I know a ghost who isn't scary at all. You? You know a ghost? I do. Oh, I hope you haven't invited him to church. Well, yeah, I invited him. 
the church. He's already here. Okay, got to run. No, no, come back, come back. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Let me tell you about this ghost. It isn't a scary ghost like you see on TV. No? Listen up, y'all. This is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost? Yeah. You know, like in the Trinity. Father, Son, and... Oh, that ghost. The Holy Ghost, yeah. That, that's right, Manny. Hey, and the Holy Ghost isn't scary at all. But, but I thought ghosts were supposed to be scary. Well, in Hollywood and in movies, they're scary. But they're not scary. it's not scary when you think about the Holy Ghost. You know what? Let me try an experiment. Maybe that would help you understand. Okay. Would you like to see it? Oh, sure. All right, you're going to have to look over here. Okay, I'm, I'm coming. All right, so I've got a candle right here. You see the candle? I do see a candle. Okay, and then I've got this uh, lighter here. Hey, y'all, you would never play with this at home, would you? This is only for adults. Oh, no. Only for adults. Would you take a picture of all of them? Please. Would you take a picture of all of them? They look so great up here. I just love seeing all of you up here. I'm going to get Miss Lisa to take your picture. Just humor me. Look at Miss Lisa. I like pictures. Everybody look at Miss Lisa. Hey, cheese. Hey, cheese. All right. Sorry about that, Manny. No problem. All right, let's get back to the experiment. So, you know what? I've got this candle right here. Yeah. And that candle kind of is like sin, so I'm going to light that candle. It's going to burn you. Yep. And you know, if you mess with stuff that God says not to mess with, you're going to get burned. Ooh. And it hurts, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. That's how we get in trouble. That's right. That's right. And all of us go through some tough times. We do things that we shouldn't do. Mom and Dad said not to do it. Teacher said not to do it. Miss Lisa said not to do it. And we do it anyway. And that's when we get burned. We get in trouble. Yeah, I'm good at doing that for sure. Yeah, I hear you, Manny. Me too. So what I'm going to do is take this balloon with what kind of face? Oh, look, it's got a sad face. That's a sad face. Yeah. And I'm going to hold this balloon over this fire. It's kind of like all of us get in trouble with sin. If we don't have the Holy Spirit inside us, you want to see what happens? Oh. oh. <laughs> you know what happened at early church? It popped and scared all of us. This one went all over everywhere. everywhere. This one just went pew. Well, anyway, it was supposed to be more dramatic. That one wasn't as scary. <laughs> so, all right, but let's look at this balloon. Now, this balloon here, if you listen, what's it got in it? It's got water in it. It's got water in it. So this is going to be like if we have the Holy Ghost in us, the Holy Spirit, even though we sin. Whoop, i got to light this again. When we it's have the Holy Spirit. Too, it? Yes, ma'am. Sometimes adults can't do these either. So when we have the Holy Spirit in us and we're loving Jesus, here's what happens when we sin. Are we going to explode? Is the balloon going to pop? No, it's not. No, nope. that's pretty cool, isn't it? So let's talk about this just a little bit. It's because of the Holy Spirit in us that we get forgiven and then we don't even want to do the bad stuff anymore. That's pretty cool because the Holy Spirit's inside us. What do you think about that, that Manny? That's just plain cool, Pastor Tim. And you know, I guess I don't really have to be afraid of ghosts now because I have the one true Holy Ghost living inside to protect me. Ooh, that's right, Manny. You are a real ghostbuster. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Don't know who said that, but I ain't afraid of no ghosts either. No pun intended, but that's the spirit, Manny. <laughs> All right, well, it's time for us to go. Okay. So listen, if you come up here and say, say goodbye to Manny, remember he doesn't like fingers in his mouth, right? Okay. All right, hands together. And we'll say, Father, Father I love you. I love you. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right.
morning I got a text uh, from Rosie. She says, this is the 10th anniversary of Moon Koosh being cancer free. Now that's awesome. <laughs> Love it. When people criticize Memphis, we need to say, how about St. Jude, right? Let's continue our worship through giving our tithes and our offerings. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head down, I will see of the goodness of God. the goodness of God. And all oh my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath of the goodness of God. I will sing 
God, along with Chiquita, we will sing of the goodness of God. You've been so good to us in so many ways. And one of the primary ways is that you're allowing us to share our bounty with this city and with those far beyond these walls. So particularly on Missionary Sunday, we want to thank you for our missionaries who serve in so many ways in Ghana, in Kenya, and in Thailand. And we pray for them and the people that they minister to, that more men and women and boys and girls may come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. Please bless each gift and each giver. In the matchless name of Jesus, amen. Spirit of the Living God. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson is from the book of Genesis. I chose it because I wanted to emphasize that the Spirit of God is eternal. That even before the creation of the universe, God's Spirit was present. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then from the New Testament, our lesson is John 14, verses 15 through 27. Jesus is speaking here. It is just before he is betrayed by one of his own before he is arrested and humiliated and crucified. And he promises that God will send his own spirit. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day, and he means on Easter Sunday, on that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching." My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. 
I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This ends the reading of the lessons chosen for us this morning. May God bless them to our understanding. Let's pray together. Oh God, we admit that we've tried to find peace in all kinds of places, through all kinds of things, even through all kinds of people. And peace has eluded us until we found our peace in you. And so we ask that during this time together as we reflect on the Holy Spirit, we'll find ourselves at perfect peace because of your own Holy Spirit in our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, who is the Holy Spirit? Let's talk about that a little bit. The Apostles' Creed that we've been looking at is a Trinitarian affirmation of faith. That means it has three parts about God. The third section that we're going into now deals with the Holy Ghost. But now wait a minute. Which is correct, Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost? Well, the answer is both. In King James Elizabethan English, Spirits meant alcoholic beverages. And so the church didn't want people to say, I believe in the holy whiskey. I believe in the holy beer, the holy ale. But in our culture, we say spirit in a different way. We know that it means it refers to God's spirit. And it seems to me that of the three persons in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit is the one we least understand and least appreciate. There is one God, and yet He reveals Himself in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is fully God, just as is the Father and the Son. And the Holy Spirit is eternal. That's what we learn in Genesis chapter 1, don't we? that the Spirit of God was present even before creation. The Holy Spirit is a person, not an impersonal force like in Hinduism or Buddhism. And we refer to the Holy Spirit with the pronoun he or him, not it. You know, there's all this pronoun soup out there now. People wanting, one person wanting to be called they and things like that that we know don't make any sense. With the Holy Spirit, we say He, Him, God has revealed Himself in those terms. Now in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach, and it means breath, literally. In the New Testament, the Greek word for spirit is pneuma which also means breath, the breath, the life-giving force of God Himself. In John 14, shortly before Jesus ends His earthly ministry, He promised His disciples that He would send His Holy Spirit to take His place, to be available to them 24-7, 365 days a year in a way that was impossible for Jesus to do when He was on this earth. Renee and I are teaching the confirmation class again this year. I guess it makes probably the 31st confirmation class that we've taught. and uh, We tweak it every year, but every year we have the kids learn the catechism. Now, when I was a little kid, many of you grew up Presbyterian, there was this little pink catechism, remember? And you had to memorize every question and answer, and it was terrifying. The preacher would point at you in the class, he'd say the question, and you had to give the answer. But we don't do it that way. Don't worry, we're not terrorizing your children. And I'm not saying that was bad for me, it was good for me. 
but we use the children's catechism, and it's simpler, and I think it's more direct. And here's one of the questions about the Holy Spirit. It's question number nine. What is God? Well, next week, they'll have a test. It's fill in the blank. And kids, parents, if your kids aren't in here, listen, this is one of the questions. And here's the answer. God is a spirit and does not have a body. It's mysterious. Well, let's look at the mysterious Holy Spirit. Three primary roles of the Holy Spirit. The first one is life giver, and then helper, and then power giver. Let's think about the Holy Spirit as life giver. And for this, we need to go to John chapter 3. Jesus told Nicodemus, a religious leader in that day, that the Holy Spirit was like the wind. Now let's think about the wind. I just came from Rhode Island, and the wind coming off the ocean about froze my southern bones. It was cold. That's not the wind that's being described here in John 3. The disciples and Jesus were in Israel. It's a it's an arid place, and it's hot, so when the wind comes through, it's like wind in Memphis in August. We're glad to have some wind, aren't we? And we've even harnessed the wind and put it in fans. This is the kind of wind. It's refreshing, but it's also uncontrollable. And so if it's August and we've had power outages and the air conditioner is out at your house, man, you'll give anything for a breeze, won't you? And so Jesus continues with Nicodemus. He says, Nicodemus, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound, but you don't know where it comes from or even where it's going, and so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God is going to reach down in your life and blow away gently the sin, the guilt, the shame, and blow into your heart the love of God. And if it's happened in your heart and in your life, you know exactly what Nicodemus heard Jesus say. Am I right? And then Jesus goes on to say, we forget sometimes, I think, that John 3.16 comes from the lips of Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life, that life-giving, born-of-the-Spirit love that comes from God. So the first role of the Holy Spirit is that He is a life-giver. The second role of the Holy Spirit is that He's our helper. Just before Jesus was betrayed by Judas and arrested, He told the disciples He was going away, and they began to panic. But he told them also he would not leave them alone. How poignant that is. Here is Jesus on the precipice of the cross. On the precipice of having people betray him, spit on him, beat him, stab him, put nails in his wrists and in his ankles, and he's worried about the disciples. Jesus said, I'll ask the Father. And He will give you another counselor to be with you always. It's as Gutsky said in my opening introductory quote there. There's another counselor. Jesus was the first and the Holy Spirit is the second. In other words, we all need some counseling. Now, you may be one of those people who says, Huh, I'm too proud to go to a counselor. I'll just take care of this myself. Okay. Well, the Holy Spirit is your counselor, even if you won't come talk to me or come talk to a Christian counselor. The Holy Spirit counsels you because very often in this life you get the wrong advice. Men ask friends who have no idea about the Ten Commandments when they're having marriage trouble. And women get in, and I'm not trying to be sexist, but women get in with a bunch of women who don't know anything about forgiveness or morality, and ask for their advice. That's not good counsel. Your counsel comes from the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. 
Jesus said, The Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. The teaching comes from the Bible. And like it or not, we're a forgetful lot. You need to be in church every single Sunday, unless you're sick, because you need reminding from the Word of God and the people of God that you're forgiven and that there are rules for this life. And you need to be studying this Bible every single day. And if you're not, you're starving yourself to death. But if you are studying the Bible, the Holy Spirit will come into your life and change you and you will never, ever be the same. The Holy Spirit is a life giver. The Holy Spirit is a helper. And third, the Holy Spirit is a power giver. We see this in Acts chapter 2. The gift of the Holy Spirit gave the first Christians courage. Now we need courage in America today. The current government is oppressing Christians and Christian belief. It's just a fact. And the more radical of them will admit it. And we need courage to say, no, no, I don't believe that. I don't want that for my family. I don't want that for my country. But the first Christians had it much harder than that. It was just, they didn't just say no. When they said no, they got arrested and they got murdered. And we need to be prepared in our country to say no, and to say yes to grace. We need to have courage. The Holy Spirit will give that to us. Here's how it first happened. They're in the upper room together. Jesus has gone back to heaven. They really don't know what's coming. And all of a sudden, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting was literally the breath of God from heaven, blowing in like a tempest. And suddenly these men began to speak in languages they didn't know. So it would be today like us being in worship and all of a sudden because there are some Spanish people on the front pew, I start speaking Spanish. And then because there are some Russian people in the middle over here, I start speaking Russian. It was a preview of how the church would spread to the world and everybody, every people group would hear the love of Jesus Christ. And it filled them with courage. They changed the world. Tongues of fire began to rest on each of them. John Calvin said, the Holy Spirit is the bond by which Christ efficaciously unites us to himself. In other words, the life-giving, helping, power-giving Holy Spirit is at work in all of us who love and trust Jesus Christ. I made some new friends the past two weeks, some Navy chaplains who do amazing things. They're active duty chaplains. I'm just a reservist. They're changing people's lives every day. And I want to share with you a story one of them told me about the Holy Spirit. My new friend, Chaplain West, said that this young sailor was a sailor that other people didn't like. But the Navy chaplain befriended him. And as they got to know each other, the, this sailor, he was a big, tall sailor, he said, uh, Chaps, I'm an atheist. Do you want to be my friend? And he said, You're not an atheist. Nobody's really an atheist. And so they would go back and forth. One evening, my chaplain friend went out to the forecastle, which is the forward deck on a boat, on a ship, this case a destroyer. 
and he saw that sailor standing too close to the edge. And as he came up to him, the sailor said, Chaps, what are you doing out here? He said, well, I always come out here after evening prayer. I like to look up at the stars and pray some more. And that sailor said, Chaps, I was just about to jump overboard, but I decided to pray. And I said, God, if anybody comes out here, I won't jump. And you came. And they sat down and they talked and prayed. And my chaplain friend took that sailor to medical to have him evaluated. He kind of lost track of that sailor. They were about through with that voyage, that deployment. But several years later, this chaplain friend of mine ran into this sailor again. Before he could even call his name, he said, Chaps, Chaps, let me tell you what's happened in my life. I believe in Jesus now. The Holy Spirit has changed my life. I've gotten married, and everything's different. The Holy Spirit of God comes alongside us. He's our comforter. He's our counselor. God Himself, in this present age, waiting to love on you and on all those who know Jesus. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Oh God, sometimes we are like that big sailor out on the edge of a ship, wondering if it's worth it, feeling like no one really cares about us, feeling like we have, haven't accomplished the things we wanted, just feeling alone. How grateful we are for your own Holy Spirit coming alongside us, the paraclete, the breath of God. We thank you for the love you show us through your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and join in singing Sweet, Sweet Spirit. you've been revived and you want to be a part of a church where you'll be revived every Wednesday, every Sunday, every time you come to the top of this hill, I'd like to talk to you about it. May God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you and those you love. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.